Well, it's been a soggy start to the work week here and in Grand Forks. And we're seeing showers continue, but down by the Dakota Magic Casino, showers wrapping up the wind, not too strong, but here's a look at the very latest with the rain from Langdon through Hallock, Roseau, Bidette, and Point South. Those moderate to heavy showers do continue. Things drying up a little bit off to the west. We're not done yet with our chances for rain. More on that in a second. But right now, the heaviest showers shifting into eastern parts of Otter Tail County and lifting into eastern parts of Becker County. So Park Rapids, you'll be seeing some heavy showers in the next 10 minutes working their way through. They're moving northeast at about 25 miles per hour. So. In Park Rapids, you have quite a bit of rain shower activity to continue yet. As we look up near Pembina and out towards Langdon and Rock Lake, some sprinkles continue, as is the case in Grand Forks, although we're starting to see things dry up just a touch in southwestern Grand Forks County. And looking into northwest Minnesota, this is the area that will have prolonged rain showers this evening, hours of rain, and many areas could indeed pick up well over an inch of rain yet tonight heading into the late night hours. 50s where you see the greens, including Grand Forks at 57. It is now 60 in Jamestown. We've warmed to 60 in Fargo-Moorhead, and it's a degree better than that in Fergus Falls. Look down at Aberdeen. It's 76 degrees there. Quite a nice warm boundary where they've seen some sun. And along that boundary, our hour by hour forecast does show that even though we're quiet now, and as these showers exit into northern Minnesota, there will be a chance for some thunderstorms. Now in South Dakota, a couple of those storms could be on the strong side. But for us, I don't think that will be the case. But don't be surprised if you hear rumbles of thunder this evening between 8 and 10 o'clock at night through the Southern Valley, while the main shield of rain continues to press toward the international border. As we head to bed, there will still be a fair amount of cloud cover and shower activity across the valley. It'll really be after 2 a.m. before things start quieting down a little bit and temperatures will slip into the 50s. And it does look like patchy, dense areas of fog will be a likelihood as we go into our morning hours. And the first half of the day will look gray, but not as wet as today. And, uh, we won't warm up too quickly in the morning, but in the afternoon, clouds begin to break up, peaks of sunshine, and, uh, well, a more relaxing drive home with a lot less rain shower activity. Tomorrow night late, many along the South Dakota border will have a chance at showers, but the vast majority of us stay dry where the clouds and the rain showers persist for longer temperatures in the 50s. We warm that to 70 in Fargo, mid 60s to near 70 in Southeast North Dakota. Here's a look at soggy conditions Robert captured in Clearbrook, Minnesota. Anyone still trying to harvest has a lot of mud and muck to work their way through. All right, so dry on Tuesday with late day sunshine, but Wednesday north winds pick up a little bit. We'll have a chance for some showers in the forecast as well, but just a, a few of us will see them. On Thursday, a very strong storm system comes through. It looks to bring a lot of wind. It looks to bring clouds and a very good chance of widespread showers of rain. But after that, after a breezy Friday, we'll see sunshine for much of the weekend. Temperatures in the low to mid 70s, Saturday, Sunday, and again on Monday with only spotty showers in the forecast. There's that break we need. Yes. <laughs> One day or something. Shows improvement. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> you bet.